Hi chemists, welcome back. In this video, we are going to focus on what kinetic theory says about the properties of liquids. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the properties of liquids according to the kinetic theory, relate a kinetic energy diagram to the process of evaporation, and describe the equilibrium process. Kinetic theory of liquids talks about liquids as if they're acting more as a unit. So liquids tend to move together with those particles are attracted to each other. And this is primarily due to the fact that liquids have stronger intermolecular forces of attraction between particles. These forces of attraction in a liquid are much greater than those in a gas. And it is the intermolecular forces of attraction that keep these particles close together. I thought I would show you this quick video clip to kind of illustrate what intermolecular forces I'm talking about. You can see he's starting out with a balloon. He pops it with a needle, but check it out. He slows it down. Isn't that incredible? Look at how the particles in that liquid still take the shape of the balloon. And then as it slows, you can see it's all moving as a unit. Pretty cool. What you see on the right hand side is a particle model of what liquids do on the particulate level. Particles in a liquid often have enough space so that they can slide past each other. We say that liquids also have the ability to flow. Both liquids and gases share this property. However, as you probably know, solids cannot. Liquids are also not easily compressed while gases have very large spaces between the particles. Therefore, it's very compressible. The particles of gases have the greatest amount of kinetic energy and solids have the least. A liquid's kinetic energy is in between that of solids and gases. Liquids also tend to evaporate if eventually left out. They will easily change from a liquid to a gas. When we talk about evaporation, it's not the same as boiling. Evaporation is the conversion of a liquid to a gas below the substance's boiling point. You would never see any bubbles visible throughout the liquid. In order for a substance to evaporate, a particle has to have enough kinetic energy to overcome the intermolecular forces of attraction. Basically, the particles need to break free from each other. As the particles with the highest kinetic energy evaporate away from the liquid, the average kinetic energy of the particles decreases, and so therefore the temperature decreases. Here's an example of what we call a kinetic energy diagram that can help us make sense of this. So I'm gonna split this into three different sections. And then I also have a glass of water that I'll break up into three different sections. So the important part here, since we're talking about evaporation is actually section three. In section three, if you're looking at this graph, you can see that kinetic energy is on the X axis. And as you go further to the right, the kinetic energy is gonna increase. Therefore, the particles in section three have the most kinetic energy. And so what's also important as we relate this to a glass of water, remember the particles in a glass of water actually have a distribution of kinetic energies. So for example, some particles are moving slower, some are moving very fast, like in section three, but most particles are moving with this average amount of kinetic energy. But combined with the fact that particles in section three and at the top, these are the particles that are able to evaporate. So what you need to understand from this set of diagrams is that the particles in a liquid with the highest kinetic energy and at the surface of the liquid have the ability to evaporate. You learned back in your thermochemistry unit that heat will flow from warmer to cooler objects. And as the liquid cools, heat will flow in from the surroundings to keep the substance at room temperature. Evaporation is often referred to as a cooling process. Basically, this is because the particles that are moving the fastest or have the highest kinetic energy will leave the liquid and lowers the overall average kinetic energy. So an example of this is when you sweat. You know that when you sweat, in order to cool your body temperature down, you're going to form this kind of dew on your skin, this water on your skin. 
what happens is that the heat from your skin is going to go into the liquid on your skin and cause those particles to gain energy and evaporate away. And when it evaporates away, again, the particles that are left are lower in energy and therefore they are cooler. If you were to have evaporation occur in a closed container, what happens is that the particles will still evaporate, but the particles will be trapped, right? They can't escape. So as the gas particles build in concentration above a liquid, they are more likely to collide with each other. And remember, particle collisions are often said to be elastic and that energy can be transferred, but it's never lost. So basically what happens one particle will transfer energy to another, but then that other particle is going to lose its energy and fall back into the liquid state. So when we talk about this, we say that essentially equilibrium is reached. Equilibrium is just a fancy term to talk about two processes that are occurring at the same rate. So when we talk about a closed system, there are two phase changes that are occurring at the same time. So we have condensation and evaporation. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the liquids uh, in the, in, for example, a water bottle going into gas and then those gas particles reconverting back into liquid. And that's what condensation is. We can write this as a equation where you have water on the left and water on the right. But notice that double headed arrow, that double headed arrow represents that this is an equilibrium. Equilibrium is often referred to as a dynamic process because macroscopically it appears that nothing is happening. But if you were to have microscope eyes and look more closely on the particulate level, you'll see that there's actually a lot going on. Whereas as we talked about, we'll see evaporation and condensation going on at the same rate. At this point, you're now going to begin working on worksheet three. We'll help you review some of the concepts in this video. Thank you so much for watching.